people, good morning, and welcome to this James with Jesus on Monday, November 8th. It is, um, it's nice that it's, well, I, I prefer the, having the sunlight here in the early morning. I know it's a little bit not as nice to have it pitch black by six o'clock at night, but it sure is nice in the morning. I'm gonna revisit the text we had, or at least portions of the text we had on All Saints Sunday yesterday. And this is picking up in John's Gospel, chapter 11, give or take verse 29 or so. Well, 28. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary, so Martha was speaking, and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when Mary heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb, that is the tomb of her brother Lazarus, to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? So much going on there. Uh, and as a, as a preacher, uh, when you have a text that's this rich, you can only cover so much without it just going in all kinds of different directions. And um, I haven't had a chance to speak with Pastor Josh yet because I had worship and music afterwards, but his sermon was beautiful yesterday. And so if you've not yet had a chance to hear it, I'd um, go on our YouTube channel um, and, and really check that out because it has a beautiful way of connecting, um, just connecting scripture text with our human experience, with relatability, with compassion, empathy. So it was one of the more beautiful All Saints Sunday sermons I've, I've heard. Um, so in this one, but, but as soon as this text was finished, uh, even before he started preaching, the, the phrase that came to my mind was, real men don't cry. And I wrote it down. I don't know if I'll remember this the next time I might have an opportunity to preach on this text. But within a stoic culture, uh, Northern European, which is the, the kind of the influence of the German Lutherans that I uh, was raised with in, in church and have German on both sides of the family, and Stoicism, and, and there's a lot of value and benefit to certain of those attributes. And it was never explicitly stated because I, I was fairly free with my tears growing up. Um, but certainly within our culture, real men don't cry. And I think, well, what do you do about Jesus then? <laughs> you know, seems to me, um, you have a contradiction there. So I personally take great comfort in knowing that Jesus himself, um, knowing full well the power of God, knowing full well trusting and having faith in God, that Lazarus, although dead now, could be raised back to life, not resurrected yet, that comes at the very, very end, but raised back to life. But nevertheless, in reacting to other people's pain and suffering and anguish, he himself wept. Uh, so again, Pastor Josh touched on that yesterday. Um, I just, again, if Jesus is the way, um, capital W-A-Y, the way we want to go through life, then learning from him, following him, seeing him in his fullness of humanity and divinity, um, is is something to take and ponder in our hearts. Yesterday's worship service was beautiful, not only because the numbers have been coming down with COVID and therefore the numbers have been going up in in-person worship. People have been wonderful about wearing masks in the sanctuary, so we're, we're singing, full-throated singing. And just to see people knowing that the different prayers, the lighting, the candles, the different hymns selected, the whole liturgy was very moving. And I saw quite a few folks um, uh, remembering loved ones and moved to tears. And to me, in God's house, that's wonderful. 
that we should be as free to cry as we are to laugh. And we do plenty of laughing as well on Sunday mornings. But to know that this is a safe place to just be who we are, be who God has created us to be in the fullness of our range of emotional expression, um, that's, uh, that's wonderful. So it was great also to see several folks unexpected to see Karen Waltz up um, and for her to be the liturgy, for, for Nancy and Martha Harris to be present. Um, I know that Marie Lynn would have liked to have been had she not had the, the, the injury to her arm. Um, and so, but just collectively, people remembering loved ones and being together, singing together, praying together, receiving communion together. It was, um, it was a very meaningful worship service yesterday for me and hopefully for, for you as well. I'm gonna close with a word of prayer, but we are back at Shanklin Sam's Park. It's been about, I don't know, maybe a month or so, and I'd like to show you a few of the updates for anybody that would like to stick around, but for the rest, you're, you're free to move on with your day, but let us pray. Holy God, thank you for the beauty of this new day. Thank you for the opportunities that it brings for us to simply um, be your people and to try to reach out in love and grace and mercy and hope to a world that's desperately need of all of those. Uh, amongst ourselves, to be reminded of these wonderful gifts that you give to us, give you thanks for the, the gift of a community of faith, a loving community of faith that can be so supportive um, to one another. So help us simply put to use the, the gifts and talents that you've entrusted to us, not only for building up the church, the body of Christ, but also for your work in the world. And these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, have a blessed day today. Again, I'm gonna do about a five to seven minute tour of Shanklin Sam's Park for anybody who would like to stick around or Shanklin Sam's Green Space. Otherwise, Pastor Josh will be with you in the morning. So here we are at Shanklin Sam's Green Space and the English Ivy is doing its job with uh, uh, erosion control in certain places, but basically it is an invasive species and it'll take over everything, including climbing up hardwood trees. And if it makes it all the way to the canopy, um, it can actually choke out a tree and kill it. So English ivy, you know, better to not have it on the trees, but uh, it doesn't do anything bad at this point. And some people like the aesthetic of that. But again, once it gets up into the canopy, it can do some real damage. So you see just a lot of um, scrub plants that have planted here. So that's what this whole place looked like a while ago. And now I have been working from this side of the path over, removing the English ivy both from the trees, from the ground, because eventually want to plant this, replant this with native uh, plants. And we do have some dogwoods there. Those are native plants. These are not native. <laughs> Chunks of asphalt, concrete, and brick in the suburban archaeology. Um, but have removed all the English ivy from this area. Have saved the red buds, the eastern red buds, because those are a native tree that bloom, bloom beautifully in the springtime and are usually the first tree to flower out. So when you see the pink or magenta flowers on the on the red buds, you know that the spring is here. Have a camellia and a holly. The camellia is blooming right now. And so we had English ivy all through this area. So about from here to there, down to that one little patch to get rid of, um, and then can start replanting. The city had moved this Japanese maple over here, which is wonderful. The city also brought out loads of mulch, which the LCM students are gonna help spread this week. They brought out compost to help create this bed. And then these were plants I got through the South Carolina Native Plant Society and the South Carolina Botanical Gardens. And um, so you've got some uh, cone flowers here that obviously are at the end of their season. You have um, beautyberry, which is nice. And then I believe this is ironweed, if I'm not mistaken. And then an oak leaf hydrangea. So. Looking back on the park the other way, and there's Unilu's uh, back lower parking lot. So looking back, we're going to begin to um, continue to add plants in this area. 
skip over and then over where the red buds are. Maybe get some native azaleas in there um, and just make this whole bank uh, just a colorful explosion of, of, of flowers and shrubs and um, intermediate sized trees. They've got the big canopy trees already in place, which is wonderful. So it's just a beautiful area. I, I happened to bump into a, a landscape architecture student the other day and we had a good conversation about um, about his his major as well as the plants and, and design and everything. So just good opportunity to meet the neighbors while hanging out in some fresh air. Oops, there you go. I was trying to get back to me. So have a blessed day and I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.